Jeez, that was a long time in church. <sighs> hey guys, it's Chaos Maelstrom here, and welcome back to more Banjo Kazooie. In the last episode, we entered Mad Monster Mansion and started doing things. And in this episode, we're going to continue our exploration of Mad Monster Mansion. We're going to start by going up on the roof of said church and grab some uh, notes up here. Also, I really like the somber variation of the theme music that plays here because the theme music for Mad Monster Mansion is surprisingly upbeat, but here it's much more relaxed and it actually can be a bit creepy, which is something I'd expect more from a, a, a mansion level like this. I mean, not that I don't like it, it's just that I feel that normally Mad Monster Mansion is a bit too upbeat! Okay, apparently, if I don't praise the game, then, all right, well, we'll go back up there in a bit, but since I decided to land right here, I'll take the liberty of going through this maze right now and collecting everything I need. Uh, there are some notes in this maze, as well as a Jinjo, so make sure that you don't go through this maze, and preferably before you get the transformation, because, spoiler alert, there is, well, even though we're probably going to find out in this episode, there is a mumbo transformation in this uh, in this level. So, oh god! Where'd you come from? Okay, well, it doesn't matter anymore because you're dead. All right. So yeah, make sure you collect most everything in this maze before you at least kill the Tiki's before you go to Mumbo's transformation. Because again, croc crocodile is the only mumbo transformation where you can actually attack stuff. Even the crocodile probably wouldn't be able to defeat these tiki's, so... Alright, but... Now this looks... Let me talk about something. We all know that I love Banjo-Kazooie, as if I don't talk about it enough, because it's a game from my childhood. I loved it so much during my childhood, I decided to go and make a parody of it. This parody... has started the basis of my work, which is what has been my original works that I've been working on for who knows how long. Allow me to explain it. So, I originally... It's part of the, um, quote-unquote Sean series. That's basically what I refer to the early works as. Most of them, anyway. Um, and they were all around really fun for me to write. Um, so yeah, the, the entire series, <laughs> quote-unquote Sean series, started as a parody of Banjo-Kazooie. Allow me to go back in time to third grade when I first started writing it. Back then, that was when I first met Cameron. Cameron, in part, had to play with the creation of the original Sean series. Of course, he doesn't remember me from back then, but then again, he doesn't remember much, now does he? Well, back then, I didn't like him. There was just something about us. I think that we just seemed to be rivals. He, he annoyed me so much back then. That was before I be learned to become tolerant and learn that we have a lot in common. And learn that we are actually really good friends. Really good friends. <clears throat> yeah, so he was the villain and I was the hero. No, 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 no. Okay, that is obviously something right there with Banjo-Kazooie's faces. We'll get back to that in a minute. First, I want to get to the thing I keep on missing on top of the church. So yeah, the series starts out basically with Cameron as Gruntilda. He even does the rhyming and everything. Has a pod as a... As a minion and... Yeah, I was really uncreative as a kid. I did start adding in more creativity later. More originality. But yeah, it was... Thanks to Cameron and this game that I got my creative streak going and began for forging a pathway through who, to who I was. So this game means a lot to me, obviously, and so does Banjo-Kazooie, which is why it pisses me off beyond belief that, that Microsoft had to go and kill Banjo. Alright, if you guys want to hear any more about that, that's fine. You can just ask me or whatever. I mean... There's plenty of, I could talk about that stuff all day for sure. But there's the thing with this flower pot. This is another one of those jiggies that confused me as a kid. What you're supposed to do is poop an egg into it. Now, listen carefully to what it says. Thank you. 
Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> it said, oh God, well this is Ripper here, interrupting me. It's a pretty tough enemy. But yeah, th of course they're supposed to be saying thank you, but we all know what it sounds like, right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is also, uh, I believe that's Grant Kirkhope providing the voice of the flower pot. So, yeah, kudos to you for doing that. Oh my god. All, all the cool little things that they hide in this game, all the cool little things that everyone does, is just what part of what makes this game so great. Thank you. Never gets old. And you need to die. Thank you. Thank you for dying. Come again. I'm sure this pot likes to thank people for dying. Because, you know, it's there. Because people die. I'm paying my respects to the dead with poop. Thank you. Alright, this should be the last power... I almost said power pot. Flower pot up here. All we have to do now is poop in you and... Alright, that is, I believe, seven jigsaws. Okay, I was right. Which means that I know exactly how we need to get the rest. But first, I want to jump into this thing here. This is actually a pretty well-hidden secret. Nothing useful in here, just a bunch of pickups. Well, nothing too useful, I mean. There's an extra life, a whole bunch of feathers and eggs, and a couple gold feathers. Aside from that, though, there's not really much else. So, yeah. Now that we've taken care of all that... Um, I believe our only option left is to go see Mumbo. And don't be a Dumbo, go see Mumbo. It's actually a code in the game, I believe. That gets you stuff that's a cheat code. A gold feather behind Mumbo's skull. Very well hidden at that. And speaking of gold feathers in Mumbo's skull, let's go ahead and wake up Mumbo. Because he's not allowed to sleep in our presence. How dare you sleep in our presence, Mumbo? We are the protagonists of this game! You can't do that to us! Or else we will big bar or else we will use the big buster on your head! Yeah! Yeah, you better not. Okay, let's go ahead and don't be a Dumbo! Let's go see Mumbo! Ah, Mumbo proud of pumpkin spell. Make good soup. Do you have to say something like that every time we transform Mumbo? Okay, well, how fitting for a haunted house area that we turn into a pumpkin. In case you're wondering on how to get things that we're, we seem too small to get before, this is how. Now that we are small like this, we're able to go practically anywhere and get anything that we missed before. Um, first and foremost, I want to go over to back where that well was. Where the gunk was as well. Uh, you guys already know the way here, just go this way and make a U-turn. Back there. Alright, there are multiple ways you can do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump in the well the old-fashioned way. And, well, 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 what do we have here? A jigsaw inside this bucket. I suppose you could also get this as banjo, as well as these notes, but they're probably a lot more difficult to do. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're extra careful in here since you can't defend yourself. And make sure you avoid those whip cracks at all costs. Okay, uh, five notes left in the level, I know exactly where they are. That's also how you get into the well the other way and get out of the well as the pumpkin. And now that all that's taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and... I saw that! I am glad I managed to see that Mumbo token. That is actually well hidden. Okay, well, since I'm here this way now, I'm going to go ahead and, um, go to the second floor of the mansion as the pumpkin. How do you do that? There are actually, uh, two ways you can do it. One is you could very trickily jump off the gravestones and get onto the roof of the church that way, and then jump across onto, uh, the railing. Normally that railing would hurt you, if on top of it because it's thorny 
but not as Banjo the Pumpkin. The easier way is to go through here. And ta-da, you're on top of the hedge. Now, first things first. I want to do is jump in here. And go grab this extra honeycomb piece under the floorboards. Fairly easy to get, that one. Okay, but now, more importantly. Um, here, this one's actually pretty tricky to get. You can enter this water barrel from the hole in it below, but you won't be able to get the jigsaw unless you drop in from the top. And, 100 notes! You found old one, hey, don't cut me off! Okay, well, now there's only one more jigsaw left to get in this level. I bet some of you might not know where it is. Okay, well, I'll give you a hint. It's a place we went earlier where I said it's my probably my favorite room in the game. That's right, you guessed it! It's in the bathroom! I also took the liberty of killing that limbo from earlier so it wouldn't bother us. Now, how on earth are we supposed to be able to find this thing in the bathroom, you may ask? Well, there's only one real place in the bathroom we haven't looked. This character's gotta be here for some reason, right? Here we go! Happy learnings, little one! Ah, you cursed squirrel, look what you've done! And here we are! Yep, they went there! Welcome to the... Inside the toilet. Well, we have all the... Jigsaws in the level now, we have all the Jigsaws in the level! And with that, we can finally exit! But, don't go back to Mumbo and re-transform! Oh wait, I can't believe you went in there! Now wash your hands, filthy bear! Yeah, when that's coming from Gruntilda, you know you've done something disgusting. Honestly. But yeah, don't transform back into Banjo just yet. There. Yes, you practically need the pumpkin. No, you do need the pumpkin in order to progress through the game. But we've 100% in Mad Monster Mansion. Um, so we can go for it. Uh, be careful, that guy right there is a ripper, and you cannot defend yourself against him. I said you cannot defend yourself against him, so don't get too close to him. What you want to do is go around, and remember when I told you to knock down this gate in the last episode? Be thankful that you did that, because you need this in order to progress through the game. Avoid this gruntling here. Wow, you are slow, sir. And we go through the little hole in this door. Now, first things first, this is the only spot where you will find Mumbo outside of a world. Right here in Gruntilda's lair. You can use Mumbo here to transform back into Banjo temporarily. And with Banjo, we can kill this Teehee. But more importantly, we can open this coffin, grab another gold feather, and hit this. With this button pressed, we raise the water level in this segment of Gruntilda's lair. We can now reach that area where we couldn't before. Monsters chase you, they're a hounding, then you'll get a grunty pounding. Thank you, Gruntilda. I've always wanted a grunty pounding. Even though I don't know what it is. Hopefully not something sexual. Pumpkin making mumble hungry. Me get pot ready. And that's our cue to leave. Okay, but believe it or not, there's still more we can do outside of Gruntilda's lair as the pumpkin. What exactly do we have to do? Well, first we need to get away from this Gruntling. And we have to go back to the Cavern of Lava right outside the entrance to Mad Monster Mansion. Right through that door there. I'll meet you guys there in a second. Alright. And with that... There is another pathway we can go as the pumpkin, but... You can see why I'm kind of hesitant to do this. Instant death below, and it's an extremely narrow pathway. You want to take this pathway very slowly and very accurately. This is probably a speedrunner's nightmare right here, but then again, why am I saying that? We've got World A coming up next, and that there is the bane of... What World 8 holds the bane of everyone's childhood. You will see what I mean. 
We got Brent Tilda over here. Revolting Brent Tilda's bedroom has smelly socks hanging from the ceiling. That is nasty, lady. She is nasty. She also has a Veruca plant growing in a pond beside a bed. Filthy old bag. And you'd be sick if you saw her enormous spotty purple undies. Okay, well, whatever. The fact is, now we're over here, and we can visit whatever this tiny hole has to offer. What does it have to offer? Hey, it's Cheeto! We haven't seen you until the aftermath of World 4! <laughs> Cheeto, Bear, and Bird have found once more another spell they get. If one more page I see you turn, then Grunty shall Cheeto burn! Nasty witches, so cold I shall tell. Enter Red Feathers on Sandcastle 4 in Treasure Trove Cove. Alright, well we received yet another code from Cheeto. So we can enter that whenever we want to, if we can go back to Treasure Trove Cove. But there is still one more code in the game, so I'm not going to go back just yet. What I am going to do, however... SPEEDRUNNING TACTICS! Okay, and now we can safely go back to, um, wherever we need to go. Long of tooth and strong of arm, Grunty's got the lasting charm! Okay, wonderful, thank you, Gruntilda, we totally needed that rhyme. Okay, um, before we end off here, because we're about at that time, I'm gonna go ahead and do something, uh, very stupid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get those two jigsaws, uh, from the Witch Switches. The one from Freeze Easy Peak and the one from Mad Monster Mansion in one fell swoop. Why do I do that, you ask? Because this is a bit of a pain to pull off. Because you have to do something twice in order to get them. Now you see what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to... God. I knew he was there. Shouldn't have looked. Okay, what I'm gonna do, go up here. And you're gonna have to be a bit quick on your feet again, because we got something that we need the uh, turbo trainers for. First things first, hit this switch. Grab the turbo trainers, and race over to where that fly pad is. There was a cobweb there event originally, but I got rid of it when we first entered this big cavern right here. All right, and we flew off there. Okay, now, first things first, we're gonna go get that jigsaw we got from Freezy Z Peak who knows how many days ago, because I've been trying to get my computer fixed since I realized that the commentary was messed up in Freezy Z Peak, and I never really got around, I want that mumbo token. Y you know what, I'll just go back and get that off screen. Okay, but the reason I want to do that is because there's also another fly pad there. So, instead of having to do that silly... I guess we will have to do that silly Turbo Trainer thing again! Thank you very much! Oh my god, I am not happy after that! I went out of my way all this time just to avoid having to do that stupid fly pad thing twice! And what happens? I go and screw it up! Now I have to do the fly pad thing twice anyway! <sighs> okay! That feels a lot better. I hope you guys don't mind that. Because we do need the fly pad in order to get that jigsaw from Mad Monster Mansion, so... Let's go ahead and hit this switch. And try this again! Okay! Good! made it. Now, big bomb this glass eye here, and very carefully, grab the jigsaw! Alright, we did it! And with that, I think that's quite enough for this episode. Next time on Banjo-Kazooie. Oh boy. Next time on Banjo-Kazooie, we start World 8. Everyone's favorite world. See you guys next time! 
Laters!